Morning guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat podcast channel and um, yeah, let's, let's dive into this. Um, my name is Mina, welcome. I am known as Knitting Expat Online on Instagram and on Ravelry you can find me as Mina Phillip and um, where else? We've got a group on Ravelry, the Knitting Expat podcast group. It's not as active as it used to be, mainly probably because I'm not as active on Ravelry at the moment but I'm hoping to try and change that over the coming months. Um, last year was quite a hectic year for us and I ended up, like some things ended up falling to the wayside and that's fine, but um, anyway, that's a bit of a tangent, wasn't going to go there. Um, welcome, um, if, you are, if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back, I always appreciate it and if you are a new viewer, I hope you enjoy what you see and if you do, uh, feel free to click subscribe, um, just means you'll get notified whenever I upload a video. Um, this is episode number 134 of the podcast. I do upload lots of other videos of other types other than just these sort of typical sit down podcasts as I call them. Um, I also upload family vlogs on the channel. Uh, there's actually one I uploaded last week or week before um, which was quite fun and um, I also upload like little snippets here and there sometimes if we're doing like a fun activity I do like a little short video on it or um, I do reviews. I do monthly knit crate reviews as well with my daughter. Um, I have a daughter as well who has just turned two recently. So there's lots of different content on this channel. I, I also do spinning vlogs. I'm also a spinner. So other than just being a knitting podcast, this is also a spinning podcast. So um, I do also upload spinning vlogs where I go into m more details about how I go about prepping fib the fibre I have to then spin it and then what the resulting yarn turns out like, what my intentions were, what the results are, did I change my mind in between, um, in terms of how I wanted to spin it and all I sort of walk you through what I do and I'm a really new spinner, I only just started spinning on my spinning wheel in November of last year, so very very new. Um, I have a Kromsky Sonata for anyone who's, who's um, curious, that's the word, <laughs> for anyone who's curious. And um, and yeah, so that's a bit of an introduction about me. If you're a returning viewer, you probably already know all of that. So welcome back. Um, thank you. Did I thank returning viewers already? In any case, thank you. I always appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell. I'm not quite a hundred percent with it today. I woke up this morning. Actually, I went to bed last night, um, feeling really rubbish. And I woke up this morning, and I feel like I'm coming down with something. I'm not sure what it is. I've got my back hurts, which is pretty standard to be honest. Like I, my back's pretty much always in some level of pain, and um, like I haven't been sleeping very well this week at all. Like I've actually cut out coffee this week, not in, not like with intention, just as it just so happened. I just haven't had a lot, of, haven't had any coffee this week. Um, it hasn't made any difference <laughs> to my sleep. If anything, it's been worse. I've only had one or two cups of tea a day. And um, if that, some days I've not had any either. So I know it's not too much caffeine, but um, but yeah, just not been sleeping very well. And then like I said, I woke up this morning, my throat feels really rough and sore and i um, just not feeling 100% with it right now. I do have a cup of tea with me because my throat is a bit sore and I do have a lot to talk to you guys about. So I wanted to make sure I was um, had something warm to sip on. I'll try not to be too annoying about it. All right, so first things first, I have a few new designs to share with you that are either released already or will be released by the time this podcast comes up. Uh, the first one is, this was released on the at the beginning of March, and these are the Summer Breeze socks. And these are actually part of the Seasons Sock Club. So I'll show you up close on one. Um, it's just stripes of garter with some slip stitch details. It's, it's hard to tell with this lighting. There we go. You see that the photos on the pattern um, show it better. This, the lighting is quite bright, so it's kind of blowing it out a bit. Um, I don't know if that makes it any easier or not. Anyway, you can see it in the pattern photos clearer. Um, oh, there we go. You can see it there with where these some more contrasty colours are popping out. Um, it's a really fun pattern, really easy to knit, and it's one of those ones that once you've done a repeat or two you can read your knitting and you can see what comes next and it's very easily memorizable so it's great for on the go knitting for something if you want to have something to knit on the go that's patterned but doesn't require you to sit there with a pattern in front of you the whole time 
this is great um like i said once you've done a couple of repeats the rest just it's just a matter of um reading your knitting and flying with it and i also did something a little bit different for the cuff i did a slightly lacy rib which i thought would be something a little bit more delicate and summery to go with the summer theme and the yarn i used for this was by sign of fibers it's on her madhouse base i believe which is a hundred percent superwash merino in the shadow colorway i had actually thought i picked up the superwash merino nylon like her sock base um but actually i don't mind 100 percent superwash merino for socks i have i'm not super hard on my socks so um that's usually fine for me and the next pattern that i released which i released just over a week ago now i guess are the the cable tats so this is a three-in-one cable hat pattern so you have the same base hat design like same like depending which size you're knitting all the cast on stitches are the same the ribbing is all the same your increase round is all the same and then all it boils down to is you picking which cable pattern you want to use on the body of the hat and the crown decreases are all the same which is great so the first option is the eight the, um, the braided hat so this is a very sort of classic braided cable and all of these just have a fluffy pom-pom on it at the top um, it's just a classic braided cable. Then the second option in the pattern is what I've called the asymmetric cable. And then the final option is in the pattern is called the big and small cable. So you can see we've got like a couple of small crosses and then a big, big cross as well. So it's just a little play on not super, uh, like quite descriptive um, names for the patterns. So the yarn I used for these three samples are all by Lavin de Lune Yarn Company. It's on her brand new BFL DK non superwash base. Um, and the colors are, this one is Cognac, this one is Fern, and this one is Heliotrope. And I believe, uh, Sam, um, I don't know if she still has them in her shop, but she did have kits and like these colours available in her shop. The only thing, you can buy them separately or you can buy them as kits, uh, as a kit with all three colours. Um, but, but yeah. Oh, and you also have an option between doing a folded brim, like I've done for all of these, or you can just do a regular um, non-folded brim. So there's lots of different options. There's actually six sizes, three body options and two cuff options i think there's actually overall around 36 different versions you can knit this one pattern so yeah a lot of a lot of um a lot of hats out of one pattern there so that's now available i will link i will link it below this video the show notes by the way if you are curious are below this video on youtube in the description box and the final pattern that's going to be coming out and this if it's not out already, we'll be out like the day after this podcast is released. So I will link the pattern page below once it is out, if it's not out already, is the Starry Skies Shawl. So this is a really, really quick knit. It knits up super duper fast. Um, my testers have been great. And actually the last time when I showed it to you, I hadn't blocked it yet. And it looked like the ends were gonna be a little bit too short to wrap around your neck properly properly and I was talking about putting buttons on it as you can see I haven't put buttons on it but by all means you can put buttons on it if you would like um I get a, oh, that's from when I was taking photos put a little twig stuck in it um you can put buttons along the edge if you like and then you can poke them through the eyelets on the other side of the shawl to like hold it in place but um actually after I blocked it and I didn't even block it super aggressively but after I blocked it the ends are actually long enough that when I sort of like zhuzh it on my neck a little bit. I can get this end out. So that's what I do. I, I tend to like tuck the ends under and then pull the shawl over the shoulders a little bit like that. And then what I do sometimes is I'll take the ends and I'll just do a loose. Where is it? There we go. Let me show you. A loose little not and that just holds them in place but like i said you can also um add buttons to one of the edges and then just pop that button through one of the eyelets and that will hold it in place as well that's another option and i might still do that at some point it'd be quite nice actually to have a couple of special buttons especially because this is now called the starry skies shawl if you have a couple of special buttons when they pop through they can be like the little stars in the sky that'd be quite cool 
Um, but I haven't done that yet, and I'm not sure if I will at any point. But um, so the yarn that I use, this shawl is knit with yarn held triple. So you really do knit up quite fast with uh, fingering weight held in uh, triple stranded um, on six millimeter needles, I believe it was. Um, so yes, I the three first three colors I used were all by Primrose Yarn Company on her uh, Sophia base, which is a MCN. Uh, merino cashmere nylon and the first color was embers then it moved into copper penny dreadful which is this one and then i just used a marling a was a marling technique that i like to do to blend the colors and then that blended into abyss which is this sort of like blue gray and then I, it was at the point where i was adding abyss in like around here that i realized i wasn't going to have enough to get the shawl to the size that I wanted. So I went rummaging around through my stash to see what I had to add to this to um, to be able to finish off the shawl, to get it to the right length. And then I found this beautiful, it's like navy dark blue in my stash that I actually thought, you know what, that really rounds it out. And that's totally the color that was missing from this set. And so this actually is by a British or a UK based dye, not British, UK, yeah, British, UK based dye out of Scotland. And um, this is Wee Sheeps on the Angus, I think it's a merino nylon blend, um, in the put your camel to bed colorway. And then I finished off the edge, bound off using the embers at the beginning to do the, the edging, just for a nice little contrast pop at the edge there. Also, I didn't have enough left of any of the other colors to do it. So, um, so yeah, this actually used up almost all the yarn. Um, I think I have none of the Copper Penny Dreadful or the Abyss left over. I have like seven grams of uh, the Put Your Camel to Bed and I have maybe about 20-ish grams of um, embers at the beginning uh, left over. So I used up almost four entire skeins of yarn without much left over at the end, which is always, always nice. Um, and it's a little bit, it is a little bit adaptable in the pattern. I've, because oh, I understand that fingering weight yarns come in different yardages you can get a 400 yard skein or a 460 yard skein and those are very vastly different the pattern is written up like written out exactly how i did it there's also like a percentage system given and um like grams used in each section for each color sort of um option given and um there's like because the edging is a, the edge section once you've finished doing this eyelets and increases is slightly different where the eyelets there we go you can see they changed how you do it so this is like essentially what i've called the edging in the in the pattern just so it's a little bit different and differentiates from the rest of it um you can start that at like two or three different points i've given instructions so if you needed to end it earlier or whatever you can do that and um and yeah so this if it's not out already will be out by or on friday the 15th of march so for me that now that's tomorrow but we will see when um this video goes up it might be the same day um okay so that's actually been a lot of chat about stuff that i've released or i'm releasing and my hair is just absolutely crazy <sighs> anyway all right so next up we've got um i'm going to go through some finished objects which i have a fair few to talk through then we are going to go talk about works in progress which um whilst i don't have a lot to show i actually have a lot to talk about and then we've got some spinning and again oh, thank you postman um <laughs> spinning which um again i have a little bit to talk about but not a huge amount and then acquisitions the acquisition segment is going to be quite fun this week because i pre-recorded that on monday with uh with layla i got her little um input on the whole thing so i thought that'd be fun for you guys um and then i've got some knit along and giveaways to discuss i have a few giveaways that I've had to redraw for so please stay tuned and watch to that section if you have entered any of the knit alongs last year um or the just because give um giveaway and then the mon sheep shop yarn that I was giving away um on the last episode I talked about that as well um and yeah and I have some knit alongs that I'm thinking about starting soon that I wanted to get your guys's input on and then finally we're going to end up end off with a bit of a week in review so I feel like this is going to be quite a bumper episode. So finished objects. First up is one that I can't even show you. It's for the mini skein pattern club that I'm going to be doing. And I've had a few questions about that. I will be doing a separate video about it. Um, 
I probably won't get to recording that now until after Edinburgh. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is not this weekend, but next weekend, which I'm really excited about. And then um, once I get back, I'll probably record that video for the Mini Skein Pattern Club, which will then go up for pre-order sometime in early April. So there'll be more information about that in a couple of weeks. Let's do the socks next, because that'll be quick. All my socks, <laughs> I say this every time, are knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, and they are either high, high sharps or chiagus. I knit them using 40 inch cables, um, if I'm doing two at a time, or or 32 inch cables if I'm doing one at a time concurrent sock knitting. So, um, so yeah, that's that. And I guess in somewhat of an order, the first pair of socks I finished were this pair, out of yarn by Lola did it this is on her low original base which is an 85 super fine merino 15% nylon in the cozy quiet colorway and this is just my vanilla sock pattern which you can also find on Ravelry there's a free version and a paid for version the paid for version comes with my heel technique the free one just has a standard short row heel in it um, and then uh, this is actually going to be for my brother his birthday was last weekend i meant to give it to him then and i just forgot to take it up to london with me um so i'll give them to him next week when i see him then next up i have another pair of vanilla socks that i finished last night actually um oh wow these are super sparkly and you can really see this the stellina in these these are by uh the yarn is by bad wolf girl studios lovely meg and meg and i did a christmas um swap and this was one of the yarns she included in her package to me and uh and yeah so this is in her galaxy lmc colorway um and it's just on her sock well, stellina sock base so it's 75 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon and five percent stellina but it is like super sparkle stellina and yeah really really fun and these are going to be for a friend of mine i know she's really going to love them and then finally, we have another pair of socks. And this is, the yarn is by Color Craze Fiber. She's a US based dyer. She actually gifted me this yarn, oh, back uh, almost three years ago now. And I feel really bad that I haven't got around to knitting it up yet. But I was, I was, I cast these on, on um, when I was going up to London one day to meet up with my mum to go to the knitting and stitching show. And I thought, it would, they were just going to be vanilla socks originally and then as I was knitting on them I was like oh, it would be fun to like play around with a, with a pattern so I just came up with an idea for something and I just basically did some garter ridges similar to my um, London Bee Ridge sock pattern like the garter going around and then I played around with some sort of little cabling details I actually started out doing it slightly differently up here and then switched up how I did it a bit more further down and really love how this one looks out. So this was the first version I tried and it does sort of stick up a little bit more. It's a little bit more 3D. And then I decided to try a different version, cable, and came up with this one, which is a flatter cable. It doesn't stick up as much um, and it still has a really cool effect. And again, it started out slightly differently. I was trying a few different ways of doing it before I settled on the way that I did do it. And it just doesn't make the fabric bunch as much. It does lie flatter. And I think for socks, this might be more comfortable. Um, I'm making a few other changes to the design as well as just um, figure out which cable I wanted to do. But what I ended up deciding to do was writing up the pattern with both cable options in it because I asked you guys which one you preferred and it was very much like split down the middle. Everyone liked both. So I thought, well, why, why choose? Why should I choose? I'll let you guys choose which one you want in it. So um, I'm going to be re-knitting this pattern um, now that it's a little bit more now that it's a little bit more thought out. Just one of Layla's birthday cards fell off the side there. Um, now I've thought it out a bit more so uh, so yes that was like a first draft essentially of a design uh, normally I would think out think out the pattern maybe swatch a little bit and then sort of like draft up what I want it to look like and then knit the sample but because I was sort of just on the go I was just on the fly designing essentially I was just kind of making it up as I went along and then I decided after the fact or once I was about halfway down the leg that I wanted to add in some more details on the on the sock 
as well as just that one cable down the middle. So I'm re-knitting it. So that should be fine. And that's probably going to be one of the projects, the re-knit option. Um, the actual final design version is going to be probably one of the projects I take to Edinburgh with me. <sighs> Another finished object, which I just realised I glossed over, but I'm wearing it, is my Not So Little Nugget pullover. I finally decided on the name. I'm not sure if I shared that last time. But, um, so this is the Not So Little Nugget pullover. It is now finished. Um, I know I talked a bit about before about why the, um, where this yarn came from, why it's so special. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail about that now, but I will tell you what all the colours are. So the red uh, yarn is by uh, Neighbourhood Fibre Company in the Old Town colourway. The orange is by Hedgehog Fibres in Rusty Nail. The yellow is also Hedgehog Fibres in Pollen. So this is all, um, this is 100% Super Wash Merino. These two are 90% Super Wash Merino, 10% Nylon. The green is Neighbourhood Fibre Company again in Logan Circle. So it's also 100% Super Wash Merino. And the last two are also a 90% Super Wash Merino 10% Nylon blend, but these are by Hazel Knits. And the blue is Coveralls, and the purple is Spooky Hue. I'll stand up quickly so you see the rest of it, but well, you can kind of see the rest of it. It's quite, it's a long sort of, um, goes just under my bum or around there length. So a bit like tunic length, I guess, almost raglan style pullover it's very much like the little nugget pullover that i'd knit for my daughter and designed for her originally and i wanted to have a super basic simple just throw on whenever raglan pullover um out of fingering weight yarn for myself so um that's what i came up with and i and i really wanted to use these yarns for it um just because you know they had a lot of special meaning and uh yeah who doesn't want a bright rainbow pullover um, yeah, so that's what I've ended up with. And this pattern is now currently being test knit. I knit, if I'm not mistaken, the 42 inch size. Pretty sure that's right. And um, so it's got a good amount of ease. I have, if you've been following for a while, you'll know that I've been doing slimming well. So I have been losing a bit of weight, um, which is great. And I really noticed it with wearing this pullover as normally 42 inch would not have had as much ease as it does now. So that's been a nice positive change. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I just want to put it out there, I'm not, like, trying to lose weight to be thin, I'm just trying to get back to a healthy weight where I felt happy within myself, not for, like, anyone else. Um, I always feel like I need to caveat that because I don't want people to think that it's, um, anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, right, so uh, this will hopefully be coming out in mid-May. I've given my testers about nine weeks to um, knit up this sample because I do try and give around six to eight weeks for garments usually, um, but six to eight weeks actually would put this right around the time when we're actually going on a holiday, we're going on a vacation. So it seemed a little bit silly to end the test knit either just before we go away or whilst we're away because I was not, I'm not going to be able to publish the pattern whilst I'm on this trip. So I decided to give my testers until we get back from the trip to do it, so get an extra couple of weeks. And yeah, this pattern does go up to quite a large size, some, I think around 60 inches. And it's gonna be 10 sizes, so it's really like broadly sized. Um, there is no waist shaping, it's just meant to be like a really simple, easy pullover. You can make so many modifications to this to do what you want with it. Um, like you can add waist shaping if you want, you can crop it if you want, you can do all sorts of things with, you, with it. Um, so it's just like, it's meant to be like a nice blank canvas that you can work with and I've also included the formula for how to calculate if you do want to color, color block it it's written uh, the pattern is written such that you just knit it as one color but if you did want to color block it like this or you want to like do more colors less colors there's a formula for you to like use um, a really simple really basic maths to like figure out um, how much you knit in each color before you change so you get the overall length that you want um, so yeah, there's that. And the last finished object I have to show you is this bad boy. So this is the Waffle Cow, which you guys will have originally seen knit up as this one, which was the original version that I knit up towards the end of last year. And then I knit a little baby version, which wasn't intended to be a baby version, but it turned out to be a baby version. 
and so these were leftovers from the waffle pullover that I knit out of Primrose Yarn Company and it is knit out of yarn held triple I'm really into that right now holding yarn triple and um, marling the colors together like it's one of my favorite things to do right now uh, so this this cowl is super squishy I'm just, I think this is the right way not that there's really a right way to wear this you can wear it either way up sorry about the sniffles like I said I'm not feeling 100% today um, but yeah so this is a bit blocked and I didn't like stretch it out or anything so it is a little bit on the floppy side but it flops without it being gappy if that makes sense like it's not super like low down or anything it still snugs around your neck nicely like you squish it up there you can tuck it in with your coat quite nicely what I find sometimes works quite well with these things you can wear it a bit like a snood as well like so if it's raining you can wear it a bit more like a snood <laughs> um yeah <laughs> look a bit silly um but yeah so i knit this using suburban stitcher yarns which again i think on the last podcast you'll have seen this as acquisitions and i cast it on pretty much straight after and this is what i have left over so she sent she actually sent me 11 mini skeins i ended up using 10 of them and again, you can knit this with more or less minis. This is what this is my leftovers. Um, I did only I did use one of the minis just for the cast on and the bind off. So um, I only ended up using what less than ten grams, like maybe like yeah, about ten grams just for those bits. So um, you know, realistically, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a tenth mini, or you could just incorporate that into the rest of the the pattern and it could just be like a little bit longer so um so yeah there's nine minis really used in the main section and then a tenth mini for the bind on for the cast on and bind off um which again that's optional and that's the pattern is written that way so that is optional in the pattern i've just sent a call out for test knitters for this one so this should be test knit and this and i've never i've not actually mentioned this but this is going to be the bonus pattern for the um mini skein pattern club so um, I did a bonus pattern for the socks, for the sock club every time I've run one. Um, and so this is gonna be the bonus pattern for the mini skin club. This will, when, it, when this goes up and is published, this will be available for individual purchase straight away. But if you are purchasing the club, um, then you will get this as a freebie pattern. So bear, there's that to bear in mind as well. And like I said, you can knit this to be longer by using more mini skeins. Um, or it could be a little bit shorter if you wanted to by using less mini skeins. And you can also cast on more or less stitches to make it wider or narrower. Again, that will be in the pattern. Like, I think I used five millimeter needles for these as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. And that's it for finished objects, I believe. So for works in progress, I don't actually have a whole lot to show you. I do have a whole lot to talk to you about, but I don't have any actual whips I can really show you. The one whip I have that I can show you are a pair of socks that I started, and this is just the ribbing. It's a bit blown out because it's quite a light colour. And this is yarn by Mythica Fibres, who is based out of Japan. That's Mythica Fibres. And uh, so this is her sock base. 400 meters, 437 yards in 100 grams, superwash fine merino, 75%, sorry, 75% superwash fine merino, 25% nylon in the Nimue colorway. And uh, I've cast this on, I've just done the ribbing and it's in my rainbow project bag by Rick of Whimsy Stitches. I get lots of comments on this bag every time I share a picture of it. And um, unfortunately, Rick doesn't have access to this particular fabric anymore to get in, in like the rainbow colors to be able to do this but he's got other rainbow fabrics and things that he's coming out with in like a rainbow theme um if you are interested make sure you check out his website it's just whimsystitches.etsy.com and uh and yeah like i use this all the time this bag is in constant rotation um i almost always have a pair of socks in here um so that's basically my work in progress I am working on one other design right now, but it's um, a secret and I can't share it with you because it's kind of for a yarn club um, that's been running this year. So I've really been enjoying following along to see what the uh, fun colours are. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share details, so I'm not going to share any more details than that, but it's been really fun following along with the dyers who are doing this 
and um, I was really, really honoured to be asked to design for one of the months. And uh, yes, that'll be coming soon. And I'm really enjoying and working on that one. It's, it's something a little bit different for me. Um, right, so let's move on to what else I'm working on right now. So yesterday, I finally got a chance to sit down with Perry to go over the swatch that I talked to you guys about last time. And we've settled on cables and seed stitch with a regular two by two rib border with a regular cast on um, he, without the channel island cast on. So we're just going for a regular two by two rib, which is here. And we're gonna incorporate these cables and this cable and maybe something else we're not sure i'm not sure yet but he's he's open to cables of any kind like he's not fast about that and he likes the background texture to be seed stitch which i was in, i was i was um pleasantly surprised because i was hoping he would go for that i thought i genuinely thought that because seed stitch i don't know i don't i personally don't think it's particularly feminine but i thought maybe because it's small and looks a little bit delicate some people might think it is a bit feminine i don't so i did do the double seed double moss stitch as an option as well it's really hard to see with this lighting because it's really glaring off the yarn because the yarn has a silk content in it so it's really it doesn't look that shiny in real life but on camera it looks super shiny um but there's a double moss stitch option as well but he preferred the seed stitch so that's what we're going with oh that's secretly quite happy about that um i think what i'm gonna do my idea is is doing this bottom up with satin sleeves even though traditionally Gansies have dropped shoulders he doesn't like that he wants a satin sleeve so that's what we are going to do and I'm doing it bottom up for a couple of reasons the sleeves will be knit top down but picked up and knit down so there's no seaming involved um, but I'm doing it bottom up I think mainly for stability I think I feel like bottom up garments don't like maybe don't grow as much I don't have a huge amount of experience with this, so I'm not sure if I'm completely making this up. But I feel like Gansies anyway are traditionally knit from the bottom up. So I'm um, going to do that. The yarn is a non-superwash um, merino and silk, but because of the silk, it will have quite a bit of drape to it. Again, doing it bottom up for some stability. Um, it will be seamed at the shoulders, but not gra it'll be either like grafted or like a three needle bind off type thing. So again, that will give it some structure up there as well. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like my idea right now. So the, he has this sweater that he really loves and he wears all the time. I kind of nabbed it off him right now. Um, it's a store bought from M&S, all over cabled pullover. And I remember at the time when he bought it, it was two winters ago. So it was around Christmas time, 2017 that he bought this. And, um, and yeah, he, I was surprised to be honest. I didn't, I liked this sort of style of sweater on him. I just didn't think he would be interested in it. So when I showed it to him and he liked it, I was like, Ooh, I can knit you something like this. I can design you something similar, obviously not exactly like this, but something along similar lines. And he was open to the idea. So this is a blend. This is a wool blend. Um, it's something like 30 something percent wool, 30 something acrylic and some 30 percent something polyester. So it's not, it's not all wool by any stretch. Um, but so I got the idea for the cables from this because he likes these cables. So I've, it's not the same cable, but it's similar sort of size wise. It's a similar sort of size cable. Um, and then, yeah, it's going to be a background of seed stitch instead of like these columns of broken rib um around it the other thing that he said that he likes the size like the width of this sweater fits him quite nicely so he's a 42 inch chest um i measured him and he was like that sounds about right based on like the suits that he wears and um uh, this sweater when i laid it flat and measured it is 48 inches around the chest so this so i'm working with six inches of ease is what he wants for his sweater because this is what he likes the fit of the one thing he doesn't like fit wise with this garment is the sleeves he says the sleeves are too big, like throughout. They're like super baggy on him. And they are like when I, it looks fine, um, but he doesn't like it. Like if I'm gonna knit him one, like that's the one thing he wants changed compared to like this in terms of the size and silhouette of this garment. So I've actually put it on him and then I stuck a removable marker in um, through the fabric to mark how much less, how much like narrower he wants the sleeve to be. So that's like, in terms of circumference, that's a good three inches less 
circumference than the sleeve is. And I measured his um, like upper arm circumference and I know this is not quite the same as your upper arm because you're doing this way rather than... Anyway, the armhole side, is that what it's called? Depth here is something crazy like 12 inches or something, which is a lot. Um, so it's like 24 inches around just at this point here. And his upper arm circumference is only 16 inches. That's like eight inches of ease just at the upper arm. That's that's a little bit much. So I'm, I'm going to knock it down to around like four inches of ease, which I think is going to be a much nicer fit, but still not be too tight that he can, you know, he can still fit um, jackets and whatever, like shirts and stuff underneath um, the, the pullover if necessary. And then obviously that will carry throughout so it won't be as baggy throughout the rest of the sleeve as well. And instead of doing an all over cabled sleeve like this one is what I'm planning on doing is basically a panel of cables down the down the top of the arm and then the rest of the arm in seed stitch um yeah that's my plan anyway so I just wanted to share with you guys um the design process as I go along with this and I will obviously share more as I go along I had originally thought about doing this as like a separate design series where I was going to get Perry to sit down with me and like we were going to talk through all the options and stuff like I just talked to you um it just wasn't gonna work out to be quite honest perry's really busy i'm busy and it was just hard to find a time where we could both sit down and do that um you know when there was decent daylight and all that that sort of stuff without it being too complicated um i had hoped to do it this week but then this week just got crazy busy all of a sudden for him so anyway after that after i finished this garment and um I finished the socks that I was working on. I really didn't have anything else on the needles. I was sort of like whittling down my whips. And I was in this place where I was starting to feel not overwhelmed, but a little bit, um, it's what I call decision paralysis, where I get to a point where I have so many things I wanna cast on, I can't decide where to start. And because the majority of things that I work on are design projects, I also then need to take the time initially to sort of plan out at least the beginning stages of the design so I have something to start on. And also then I have Edinburgh coming up next weekend so I want to, to cast something on that I could take with me to Edinburgh. And in terms of like portable projects, obviously socks are a given. I will definitely be taking at least two pairs of socks with me. There's one that I've cast on here already to go which I probably, probably won't touch these until I take them to Edinburgh with me so I have those it's like just plain vanilla knitting I have the second version of these socks that I want to get started and then I have another sock design that I have thought out already and will be taking with me so I have three socks to take with me and that's probably more than enough but um I had wanted to take a different design with me as well like a different um garment type either garment or a shawl I, I was hoping for more of a shawl but the shawl designs that I have coming up, or at least the one that I'm working on right now, is a secret. So I can't take it with me because not only is the design a secret, but so are the colorways. So I really can't let anyone see it um, because it's not just... If it was just the design, I wouldn't have worried so much because I wouldn't mind my friend, like some friends and people I'm seeing see it ahead of time. Like it's not a huge deal to me. Like I'm not like super, super, super secretive about stuff. But um, when it's someone else's secret as well, like the colours for a club, I really don't want to risk giving that away inadvertently. So um, that's not coming. <laughs> but I would like to take something else other than just socks, just so that there's a bit of variety in terms of what I'm knitting. Um, so I'm thinking of taking a garment along with me. And then I now have yarn for, I think something like five, six garments that I want to design so and I couldn't decide which one I would work on first a few of them one or two of them I have an idea on actually all of them I had an idea on what the stitch patterns were going to look like but um most of them I hadn't fully decided what the construction was going to be yet like in terms of the upper body construction essentially um and so I decided I was like sit down I'll swatch them and then I'll figure it out and so that's what I did. So I have a bunch of swatches here to show you. So I thought I'd talk you through those and what my thoughts processes were behind them. So first up, there's this swatch. Um, this is using yarn by Loop Fiber Studio on her like mill spun base, which um, I picked up a sweater quantity in a gradient 
of colors um this is just two of them i was just playing around with it so i'm using the same what i'm planning on doing is using the same texture from the far and wide shawl which was another shawl design that i did out of loop fiber studio Eight yarns um for the transitions between the between the color changes and i think that's what i'm going to do and i was just trying a couple of different ways of doing that and i think the background stitch rather than just being plain stock in it and i'm not sure if you can see here it's going to be a twisted stock in it so it gives a little bit of texture there so that's going to be cast on pretty pretty soon the only thing i'm um thinking about right now is the construction of this sweater whether i wanted to do like a circular yoke construction or do i want to do a um uh, like a raglan construction I'm not entirely sure yet I haven't fully figured that one out so we shall see where this ends up <laughs> that one is gonna wait I'm not gonna be casting this on soon because I do have it's worsted weight six skeins of yarn it's not like I can just take a couple skeins with me um, anyway so I'm, I'm leaving this one until after I get back um, then next up we have this this one this is a skein of this is the Absinthe colorway from Primrose Young Company is on her vintage DK base, which is a tweed base. It's definitely been blown out a bit on camera right now. That's a bit more accurate, but it's definitely looking a lot brighter than it is in real life. Um, and what I've settled on is this is going to be the main stitch pattern for the body, I think. And then I'm going to have this full like ribbing and the all the ribbing ribbed edges. And I think I'm going to do a, I think it's going to be a cardigan or maybe a pullover with like a shawl collar. I haven't fully decided yet. Um, but yeah, and I did like a little stockinette swatch at the beginning just to be able to get a stockinette gauge. Oh, you can see here, this these first three sections were knit on the same size needle. So you can see the difference between this. This is the fisherman's rib that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, how much wider this gets compared to stockinette and this other stitch pattern up here and then for this section up here I went down a needle size so I went down from a what did I start with One, two, three, four, five. I started on a uh, four millimeter or a US size six and I went down to a I went down to a three <laughs> went down to a US three or a 3.25 millimeter so I went down a lot and this is still bigger than this here so there's going to be some maths involved in figuring out that difference there. I haven't measured gauge on any of these yet to see what the gauge is, but there's that. Um, and again, because there's a fair bit of maths involved with that, and I haven't fully settled on whether it's going to be a pullover or a cardigan, I um, this one is going to wait until after Edinburgh as well. These are down to three options. Then the next one, and I've also decided this one is going to wait, but this is going to be a colour work pullover. Um, this one's going to be a circular yoke, I think. Um, so I'm quite excited about that. I've, I've never actually knit a circular yoke pullover, and I've never knit a colour work pullover for an adult. So I thought for my first one, why not just design one? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. And i um, really quite excited about it. This isn't like all of the colour work portion, and it's not even like the right layout of colours. I was just playing around with it I did snip I did I did the trying to do it in the round initially and it just wasn't working so I just did the color work flat it was such a small piece anyway um, just to get an idea and so this is yarn again by Lavender Loon it's on her MCN DK and so the main color is Cecil's armchair then we've got raw honey and then we've got um, this one is acorn dust which I thought was a really fun name it's a nice neutral and then we've got Feeling Leafy, which is the green. And so I just knit up a little stockinette swatch as well to see, to be able to measure the difference between stockinette and colour work gauge as well, in case that was an issue. Um, and again, like I said, because I haven't done colour work before in a design, um, in a garment, in the construction method that I've not done before. So um, that's waiting until I get back from Edinburgh as well. So those three are on the back burner for right now. Not for very long. Probably going to pick these up again sometime in April or once one of the next one of the garments I'm currently going to be picking up um, gets closer to completion. So next up we have is this swatch. 
So this is out of Green Mountain Spinnery on their music DK base. So it's 180 yards in two ounces, 58 grams roughly. I'm doing that from memory, so I'm hoping that's right. And this is in the Brick House Red colorway. And, and you may remember this color. I used this in the New York hat collection and I knit the Yorkville hat out of this colorway and I absolutely love this red. So I decided I needed to knit a sweater out of it. And that Vogue, um, Maureen very kindly um, let me walk off with a sweater quantity of this um, this yarn to design a sweater with. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to tell because again, it's blowing out a bit right now with the lighting, but this top section here is in the Yorkville pattern, which is just garter and knit patterning. I thought the lighting today was gonna be really good and it's fine for like my face, but for yarn, it's not really showing up all too great. It's quite a textured yarn anyway. It's very heathered and very sort of textural. Um, I did try, it would help if I showed you the right side, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure that made that much of a difference. My cat hair, bane of my life. Um, anyway. So that's the texture pattern. I, I really like how it looks in this yarn in person. Like I said on camera, for some reason, it's really not showing up all that well, but in person you can really see the texture. Um, and then I tried a couple of different other options here. So there was like this broken rib, which is actually showing this, now this is showing up really well. Uh, so there's this broken rib here and there was this other cable option that I liked, but it was a little bit fiddly and it was a bit hard to do with this yarn and I don't feel like it stands out enough, like even in person, like it doesn't look that, it doesn't stand out enough to warrant including it in this design. I feel like it would be lost with this yarn. So I'm gonna bank that for something else. Let's see if I can get the texture to show up. Mm -hmm. Looks a little bit better now, you can kind of see it. Anyway, so I like this one. I'm still trying to decide on I think I have settled actually, sorry, I've settled on how this one is going to work up. I think this one's going to be a top down setting sleeve, either pullover or cardigan, that but I haven't figured out yet. But I think I've decided that that's going to be a uh, top down setting sleeve option with like a garter at the top and then the, red, the pattern, then going into the pattern. So I think that could be quite fun. Um, I need to sit down and figure out some of the maths to get that started. And if I can get this cast on and get past like the upper body, basically up to where you, I would join to work the rest of the body in the round, if I can get to that point before Edinburgh, this can come with me because it's gonna be, the body will be super simple and great travel knitting. It's the top part um, which, where some of the interesting construction happens. On the flip side, the next option that I have to work on is um, out of this yarn by uh, Barnyard Knits, and this is in the granite colorway. So originally I swatched, this was the stitch pattern that I found in one of my stitch dictionaries that I liked. And I really liked it, I liked how it knit up, but it was just too small. It was just so small. And I was like, this was just, this is, this is gonna be super tedious to knit for a whole garment. Um, so I switched it up and I made it a bit bigger. So I modified the stitch pattern, made it a bit bigger. I like how this one looks a bit more. And I actually knit this swatch on um, a, US, a US size. I can't be right. Did I really do it on a US size three? No, I can't be, I think it. Pretty sure I did this on a three and a half millimeter needle. Maybe it was on a three. Anyway, it was a super dense gauge. I got a super dense gauge in this section at the top here. The gauge I got was like eight stitches to the inch, which is my sock gauge. And that is a far too dense of a gauge for a garment, in my opinion. Um, it's because of the cable pattern in it that it would, it pulls the stitches in a little bit. Um, so I re-swatched it last night with a couple of other ideas that I had included. And so this is really what I'm, and I haven't actually measured this gauge yet, but it already looks much better than that one. On a, and, I, and I swatched this on a US size five, it's 3.75 millimeter. And I used a US size three, so 3.25 for the ribbing at the bottom. So this is what the ribbing looks like. So it's nice and cinched in, which is what you'd want. And then this was the pattern that I settled on. Um, so you start out with the, like, I guess like the hexagon style pattern at the bottom. 
And so my thought was, this would be the body. And then once you, um, this is gonna be a bottom up drop shoulder construction. Similar style, similar construction to my Parisian Dreams pullover. So if you've knit that, you'll be familiar with that construction. So it starts at the bottom, you work all the body and then you split for the front and back and you work the front separately from the back and then you join at the shoulders, pick up the sleeves and work, work down the arms. So it's still completely seam seamless in that sense. Um, and yeah, so you're starting from the bottom, working up in this, in this textured pattern. And then as you get to the top, once you split for the front and back, and then my idea was to start fading out the patterning um, towards the top. It's a little bit hard to tell. Like it's not in the exact format it will be. It was just playing around with the idea of like sort of like fading out these hexagons. Um, and I really quite like how that looked. So, but what you can see, I'm not sure how well you can see on camera, but the gauge down here where I've got all the hexagons in um, is a little bit tighter than here when I've started to fade them out. So that's something I'm gonna have to be bearing in mind with this design. And what I've decided to do with this one is I'm gonna have the patterning on the front and back of the garment, but I'm gonna have panels of stockinette down the side um, of the garment. So the idea there is, even though it's gonna be a more boxy style, I'm not gonna have it have, I'm gonna have it have slightly less ease built uh, slightly less ease than the Parisian Dreams, which is definitely more boxy. Um, not super boxy, but boxier. Um, it's gonna be slightly less um, ease involved in it, but it's gonna have these panels of stockinette down the sides, which will allow for additional like shaping, increasing, decreasing. So if you are trying to um, modify the garment to suit you, you don't have to go through the added difficulty of trying to modify and increase stitches or decrease stitches with it affecting the patterning. So trying to put in like panels of stockinette essentially as like a faux seam, like kind of like a seam panel almost, just like panels down the side um, to, I don't know why I keep repeating myself, to um, allow somewhere for you to make modifications without it affecting the overall effect of the garment. Did that make sense? Am I just talking nonsense? Anyway, so that's the one where the thought process for the design is the most thought out. The construction is one that I've done before. Like I said, it's going to be similar to the Parisian Dreams. So I have a more concrete idea of how this is going to start. And because I'm starting bottom up, this bottom section is mainly just a tube. So it's going to be great for travel knitting. And again, the patterning is super intuitive uh, once you get started. So I think this is probably going to be what gets cast on first and probably blah, 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 probably um, will be cast on sometime over the weekend or if not um, early next week because I'm thinking I might want to also try and get this cast on. We will see. So that is where I've been at this week. That's been most of my knitting time slash brain power for this week has been on those things. Um, right there. Mm, tea's gone cold. I don't like cold tea. I'll have to warm that up later. <sighs> okay, so let's move on to spinning. This shouldn't take too long. I realise this is going to be a super chatty podcast, so I hope you guys don't mind. You guys don't seem to mind usually. So spinning wise, um, this was the first thing I spun after the last time that we spoke. And I haven't actually spun that much considering how long it's been between podcasts and how much I usually spin um, or have been spinning. But um, like I said, I've been feeling a little bit overwhelmed recently and had a lot on my plate I'm trying to deal with. And so like spinning just feels like an additional luxury right now that I can't, not that I can't, but that I didn't want to necessarily um, take the time for at this particular point, but I will be coming back to it. Um, so. The first thing I spun up was a braid of Teeswater Top. This was sent to me by the lovely Laura, who is the Lonely Knitter. She has the Lonely Knitter podcast. And the, the fibre is by Art, pa Artist Palette Yarn, and it's the Sunset Hill colourway. And it was just a Teeswater Top. Teeswater is a long wool, a very long wool, and it was in like this gradient. It was a really beautiful gradient. And I uh, split the braid down the middle, like so. If you laid it out, I just sort of split it in the middle, uh, um, yeah, rather than splitting it down lengthwise the middle. 
And what I ended up doing was I, I tried spinning this entire thing from the fold. So I drafted from the fold um, for the singles and then I two plied it and it actually turned out to be almost exactly, it was like perfect um, amount on both bobbins almost exactly. And um, because both bobbins ended on the same color the last little bit, I could just like Andy and ply it back on itself without it causing any issues, which was great. And I ended up with 96 grams 147 yards or 135 meters and I've got it's come out to be about a sport or DK weight it is very dense it's quite drapey it is very it's got a lot of halo to it I'm not sure how there you go you can see that a little bit better there against the purple it's got a lot of halo to it and it is um very dense it is a very dense uh, fiber and yarn even though I spun it a more woolen style by spinning from the fold it has still come out pretty dense um, but it's fairly even ish and I'm quite happy with how that has turned out let me see that there so yeah I'm really quite happy with it it's a little gradient yarn I'm not sure what this will be I'm not sure this is gonna be necessarily great for knitting because teaswater is quite a rough yarn very rustic in that sense um, I think it would be great for weaving, but I'm not a weaver, so I'm not sure I'm not sure what this is going to become at this point. Um, and then, next I spun up this. So this was actually some of the very first fibre I ever bought back when I bought my hand spinner, which is a Bogway hand spinner. And um, I, I picked up some fibre from a company called Willow Fibres, and this was at Fibre East uh, almost three years ago now. And this is their Icelandic Humbug. It was about 100 grams. It was a top. And I ended up with 98 grams and 232 yards and 212 meters. And again, this is kind of a sport to DK weight. So it's, again, it's quite a dense yarn. And I, I kind of flitted back and forth between doing like a supported long draw and like short backward draft. So I kind of like plate I just had fun with this one I didn't really put too much thought into it and then I and then the last thing I spun up is this one so this was a fiber if you recall from my fiber share package um, this was these were the punies and so they were green and yellow punies and I they were 70% merino to 30% silk and as I was spinning the singles for this, this was spinning really fine, like really, really fine. And um, it's, really, it's fairly consistent for the most part, but there are definitely inconsistent parts to it, but it is very fine overall. I'm trying to find some patches to show you. So you can see it's fairly fine overall with definitely some thicker patches in there. Oh, um, overall this has come out to be like a light fingering weight. I two plied this fibre and I got out of 85 grams I got 331 yards or 303 meters. So if I had a full 100 grams this would have been 390 yards or 356 meters and it's definitely a light, light fingering to fingering weight with some bits of DK in there. So I'm quite chuffed with this one. This one turned out really nice. And very squishy. Um, so that's it for spinning news. I haven't really started anything else. And I, and I finished this a week ago, so I haven't touched my wheel for about a week. Um, that should be, that's a fairly good reflection of where I'm at right now, just in terms of um, feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of go through periods of feeling a little bit overwhelmed and having some decision issues like trying to decide on things but um anyway so i'm just going to take a short break and i'll pop in the acquisition segment here for you guys to see so as this was filmed a few days ago and i'll join you on the other side with knit along news all right so i thought for this week's podcast that i would do the acquisition segment with the lovely Layla. after i posted my last knit crate review everyone Gosh really enjoyed Gosh. seeing her opinion on things so I thought she would be it'd be fun to have her involved should we do our review our box. unboxing kind of thing so she keeps saying box because I have two of these boxes of stuff to share with you guys today so we're gonna go through um actually just happens to be in order the some fiber some yarn a project bag 
and then all the things that I bought at the knitting and stitching show in um, in London a couple of weeks ago include and then with the fabrics I've put it together with some other fabrics yeah one second with some other fabrics I already have to um, just sort of show you what I had in mind when I bought the fabrics I did buy so should we show them these ones show those to the camera so this is fiber that I bought from the shepherd's hut so this is the bush that marsh the shepherd's hut yeah you show that one so this one is 100% rambouillet in the camouflage colorway oh you want to do this one can you show it say this yeah Mama. okay you want to do that one first Ta -ta. so this is 100% rambouillet in um, the camouflage colorway and it's really beautiful. I loved spinning Mom? Rambouillet. She, I, the, the Rambouillet I spun before was actually from the Shepherd's Heart as well. Um, and then this one is Rainforest colorway and it's BFL Silk 7030. All of these are 100 gram braids of roving. And yes, these are really beautiful. And what's that one? Can you hold that one up? Can you show the camera? Yeah, and this is 100% Corydale in the colorway Deep. So these two I bought to go with the other fibers I showed last time to, for that sweater spin idea that I had. And I'm going to be doing a, um, I have an idea for like a spin along slash knit along that I think would be really fun to do. But hopefully if I remember, I will talk about that. I've, I'll have either already talked about that or I will talk about that after this segment in the, actual, in the rest of the podcast. Um, because first of all, I haven't thought out the details yet. And second of all, she's too distracting for me to keep my thoughts in check to be able to talk about it now. Do you want a balloon? My gosh. The little one that's got a hole in it. The little balloon like you. So this is the fibre that I bought recently and it came with a little sample of some um, blended top in the beach colourway. You can't really see much but it's just like pale creams and blues. So that would be fun to spin with. I got a project bag in the post recently this is from hide and hammer the lovely yeah. new got yeah. in touch with me you know, we've been chatting online for a while now and um she asked if she could send me yeah, one of these project bags to try out it's a new style for her and i said absolutely and oh, it's lovely oh, 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 what happened did the, bal did the balloon pop off the end popped off it's okay mommy can stick it back on there you go um it's lovely box bottom wedge style project bag with the zippered opening this one has a lovely sort of mustard colored lining um the fabric is like a waxed canvas which i really love it gives it a really nice structure and sturdiness that it can stand up on its own without anything in it and it has this beautiful leather strap handle and on this side it's got the her logo stamped on it so that's sideways that's the right way up but you get the idea hide the camera uh, she doesn't have super regular updates because everything she does is handmade, obviously, and she also has a young child, so um, she has to work around that. And I can totally appreciate how difficult that can be. Do you like this bag? You really like this one when it came. If you saw the vlog that I posted recently, <coughs> Layla... Oh, don't put it in your mouth. That way. Yeah? Do you like it? Does it feel nice? It took me a while to get it off her when it first arrived. She really enjoyed it and kind of claimed it as hers, but... I've managed to get it back off her. Yeah, do you like the bag? Yeah? I keep this. Yeah? Are you going to sit down? mommy. Yeah? Sorry, did mommy tickle you? Mommy? Yeah? You want to put it back? Mummy. Yeah, I'll put it back for you. Mummy. What do you want, honey? You can't get out right now. We're going to finish doing this. So that's the project bag. And then, just recently, as in just a couple of days ago, um, this arrived in the mail. And I actually can't show you everything in it, so I should have done this earlier. I should have taken out the bit that I can't show you, but I'll just pull out what I can. So first of all, this package came from Sam from yeah. Lambda Moon. Okay, okay, let me, let me give it to you. Okay, can you show this to the camera? Um, Sam had recently given me a certain quantity of yarn that I'm planning on using for a, a colorwork pullover design and um, 
I needed an extra colour to go with this, the idea that I had. So she sent me a skein on her ah! MCN DK um, in the raw honey colourway, which I absolutely love this colourway. Can you show the camera? So bad. Can you show it? Can you show it up to the camera? So bad. Yeah. Do you like that colour? So bad. Is it soft? So bad. Yeah. So bad. Can you give it a cuddle? Okay, so that's the raw honey colourway. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, one second, Layla. And then she also sent me these minis, which I am planning on using for uh, one of the designs in the mini skein pattern club that I'm designing. You put that one here. Can I have these? Just one second, Layla. Just one second. Alright, she won't let me... Let's see if she'll... Oh, you want to put them back? Can you put that one here? No! It goes there. Okay. Alright, well, these are the colours that she sent. And there's another orange skein that kind of goes in between in here. But Layla's <laughs> refusing to let go of it right now. Um, so, these are the five that I currently have. So she sent me six. I think I might only end up needing to use five of them, but she sent six just in case. Um, a bit more flexibility there. And I have a couple of ideas of what these might become. So this is actually the last pattern I still need to knit for the... Mommy. Thank you. Can you put it here? That Can was... you put that one here as well? So tester. Yeah, that one's a nice colour, isn't it? So I can quickly show you all of them together before she loses her mind. All right, here we go. Now you can play with them. And they're all on her 80-20 Super so Merino Nylon Blend. Shepard. I will list the colours in the description box because not all of them have labels on them, but she did send me Shepard. all the yes. colours. Oh, these are just beautiful. Dama. Yes, oh, thank you. This one's lovely. This, isn't, this one's from Northern Mud. Shepard. Yeah. Bosh. Is it nice? Yeah, and I can't show you the rest because it's for a collaboration and the colourways haven't been shown yet so I don't want to ruin that surprise for anybody in the future. So that, that will be another design coming up. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Do you want to just play with these while Mummy does the rest? Or shall we put these away? Ray. Away? Okay. Can you give them to mommy? Away. Thank you. Away. You want to hold on to those ones? Away. Okay, I'll put those away. Away. Yeah. Are you going to put those away? Yeah, okay, you can put them in the box. Good girl. All right. So that was it for the stuff that's come in the mail recently. And the rest... And more. The rest... Yeah, okay, more. <laughs> the rest is stuff that I got when we were. I went to the Knitting Stitching Show. So one of the places I bought something from was called The Lace Knittery. Um, and they gave me this lovely bag when I purchased from them. And I actually purchased some spinning fibre from them. So I picked up this little bundle. Um, just like little fibre bats for, it says hand painted, but these are un, these are all natural colours. So there's a brown, blue face Leicester, white and grey Shetland cone tops. So there's actually 126 grams of them. There's a little bit of each. And then, so I thought this would be fun for playing around with. What's wrong, honey? Can you show this to the camera? No? Okay, do you want to show something else? Can you grab that one? No? You don't want to? Do you want to grab something else? No. Alright, well, I'll keep showing. So, and then I also got this braid of, um, it's 100% merino, and it's kind of like a tweed blend, almost. It's, this was, um, roving, I believe. And it's just merino, and it's kind of just like this grey with Tweedy Flex in it, which I thought would be quite fun to spin, something a little bit different. And I kept it neutral in case I wanted to pair it with a different fibre. Um, there was also one stall, I can't remember the name of the stall now, and I feel quite bad about this, that I don't remember the name of the company that was selling these, um, but they had skeins of West Yorkshire spinners, and this is from their, the Birds Blend. The Birds Blend? Birds Range. Yeah, you liked that one, didn't you? Um, and they had them on sale for uh, three for twenty pounds, which is a really good price. They're usually around eight pounds a ball, so three for twenty pounds was a really good deal. And I picked these up specifically to knit socks for my dad and brother because, like I said before, my dad in particular is very hard wearing on his socks, 
So this one, and I know they have names, they're named after birds, British birds, but they don't, they're not written on the labels. I know, I'm pretty sure this one is pheasant. I know this one is blue tip, and I can't remember what this one is. I think it's something like, ah! I think it might be owl, or it might be something else, and I can't remember what that one is. Layla's taken a liking to that one. <laughs> Again, if you saw the vlog, you'll have seen her reaction when she first saw these. Um, she really liked that red and grey one. Um, ah! Well, I can't remember the name of the company who was selling these at the event, but I will put a link to the West Yorkshire Spinners website so you can go check them out if you like. They're very good, sturdy sock yarns. I will be honest, it is not my favourite sock yarn to knit with because I found it, I have found it quite hard on my hands in the past compared to other commercial sock yarns, but they are very well wearing. They're very good um, and hard wearing, so um, I know they'll make good long lasting socks for my dad, especially. Um, and then other than that, I picked up a couple of little notiony things. I've just got some buttons to use in the future for some something for Layla potentially. Okay, now we're coming on to the sewing box. Bear in mind, I did not buy all of this the other day. Yeah, it's colourful fabrics, isn't it? So what I did buy, get out. This was one of the fabrics that I bought at the, um, at the, at the show. And I really liked it, I liked the succulents, um, the cactuses, and I love the little camels on it. It's a bit of like a throwback to when we lived in the Middle East. And these little, um, they look like little sweetie mountains, which I thought was quite cute. I actually bought three yards, three meters of this, um, two meters to use yeah, for the quilt, and um, a quilt backing. And I cut off one meter of it and gave it to my mum so she could make a little dress for Layla, so that'll be really cute. Um, and I thought this would go really well with these fabrics that I have. Okay, okay you can play with those. All right, one second, Layla. One second, honey. Can I have this, please? I have like this set of rainbow fat quarters. No, I actually have like 23 fat quarters, far too many, far more than I think I will ever need for Wait, one quilt. No. But I thought it'd be really fun to do Wait, a no. rainbow quilt top Wait, and then have this Wait, for no. the backing. Wait. Yeah, Wait, no. That's red, isn't it? Now. Yeah. Okay. Then the other fabric I got is this sort of like cotton, but it's a canvas, so it's quite hard wet. It'll be really good and heavy duty. But I really love the print on it. And um, I had these uh, chance wares that I bought a while ago from a now closed fabric shop in New York. And I picked up two packs of them, and they've got all sorts of different. Um, obviously prints and stuff in the pack. But I had this in mind and I knew the colour scheme was very similar to this, so I thought they would work really well together. So this is the backing, this is the top. So those were the two fabrics I bought um, as like quilt backing options for uh, stuff I already had to make quilt tops. Okay, so it's actually been about probably close to an hour since I recorded the um, acquisition segment. But the postman, uh. yeah, the postman just arrived with another little goodie that I was kind of expecting but didn't know when it was coming. So um, this is a gift and I thought, Nugget has just had a little nap. Um, it's quite early for her to have had a nap, but she was really tired. She hasn't slept very well last night. So she's looking a little bit sleepy and she was woken up by the postman. So she's also a little bit grumpy. So I thought we'd come back and quickly open this and share it with you guys because I didn't want to miss including this on the podcast this week. Can you pull it out? I think I'll grab the card. So it is from, the package is from Tiny Human Knits. She's the guy behind that is Laura. She's based out of Canada and she wanted to, she asked if she could send me some yarn um, but just, just because and I said absolutely. Um, and thank you, and also thank you, obviously. And wow, that is a lot more yarn than I was expecting, but thank you so much, Laura, this is beautiful. Um, can you show it to the camera? Can you hold it up? Wow, should we take them out and we can show them all the goodies? So Laura does a lot of self-striping yarn as well, as other types of yarn. So she has sent me two balls of self-striping. They are beautiful. I'm going to have to open these up in a second to show you them properly. And let's just see what the others that she has sent. She has sent four mini skeins. So these will be great for like heels, toes and cuffs. Yeah, are these beautiful? Look at that. Oh wow. 
Wow. And I love how everything's actually very color that coordinated, which I'm guessing was intentional so that I could use these. Oh, thank you, honey. Is that a beauty? Did you like that one? What color is it? You're still feeling quite grumpy. <laughs> quite tired. That that oh, yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? Can you show the other ones? Well done. Yeah. That yeah. And this one is Country Red, this color. It's Country Red, 80-20 Superwash Amino and Nylon. 400 yards and 100 grams. This is beautiful. Um, really lovely high twist yarn, which I love for socks. Should we open these? They just open these. So beautifully packaged. I almost don't want to open them, but I'm going to open them to show you guys. So this one Whoa, is... Oh, ball. Yeah, it's a ball. <laughs> Can you show it to the camera? Oh, don't throw it, honey. It's not a ball to throw. This is a ball we knit from. So this ball. is, yes, another that one. Is ball. Yeah, I'll open it in a second. So these are all on the same base, 80-20. And this is the Folklore self-striping colorway, which is beautiful. This looks like this is a four striper. I might be wrong, but that's what I can count right now. I really love these colors. Um, and then this one, should we open this one? This one is called 01.23. I'm wondering if this is like a one of a kind or something that she's done. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check with her. But can you show that to the camera? Don't throw it, just show it. Wow. Um, so this one, again, I think is a four striper. There's like two or three different shades of green <laughs> and a yellow stripe in there. Can you show it to the camera? If you like it. I will. Yeah. Oh, you want the other one as well? Do you want both of them? They're pretty. And so, yeah, you can see how these minis. Can you hold those up? Can you hold them up? Can you hold up the balls? Can you show, them to the, can you show these to the camera? Uh, you, yeah, you can see how they work really well with this. Can you hold it up? Can you hold these up? Uh, yeah, they work really well. Thank you for helping me, Nugget. Really helpful. You're so good. So, thank you so much, Laura, for all of this beautiful yarn um and i love how color coordinated everything is together and they are stunning and i can't wait to cast these on Dama. I, oh you want to put it back okay yeah oh you even remember which bag it goes in well done the white bag for the white ball put that one in here no no can we put it away mm. <laughs> she's like no mommy ah! okay i think we're done now good girl cool. all right Back to the rest of the podcast. Good girl. Yeah, can you put it back? Shall we go outside? Outside. Yeah? Do you want to go outside? Outside. Yeah. Do you yeah, we need to go out there. Do you want to go get the stroller? Sit down. Yeah, you're going to sit down. Well done. Can I can mommy have a hug first? No. Oh. No, we're going to go outside. outside. Alright, now, now you're back to the rest of the podcast. Okay, so I'm back now. I hope you enjoyed that little segment with Layla's um, interpretations of what I purchased and, um, and what I've received. Okay, so for knit alongs, we currently only have one knit along running in the group, which is the Season Sock Club, and that is running with its corresponding knit along until um, the end of May. So the Sock Club, the last pattern will be released on the 1st of April, and I believe the actual knit along is running until the end of May or June. I can't remember off the top of my head. But in June, the patterns will all be released for individual purchase as well. Um, and until the 1st of April, there is a special sale price on the Sock Club. So if you purchase it now, you'll automatically get the lower price. And once the last pattern is released, the price will go up to its full, um, to the full value. Um, Okay, so a couple of new knit alongs that I was thinking about starting. One was a sweater knit along, because as you'll have just seen, I am planning on knitting a lot of sweaters this year, a lot of designs, sweater designs. So I was thinking of hosting a sweater knit along, like a year long sweater knit along, well, until the end of the year knit along. Um, so I just wonder what you guys thought about that, if you'd be interested in, um, in me hosting a sweater knit along. 
and um i was also wondering should i do it as just like a generic sweater knit along or should i do it more specifically like my design sweater knit along um so i'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that um i think i probably will i'm erring on the side of like doing this because i will be knitting a fair few sweaters it'd be nice to knit with others and uh so yeah i'm interested in hearing your thoughts on that one or are there already enough sweater knit alongs going on out there that you just think it's superfluous and unnecessary and the other one i wanted to do and i'm quite excited about the idea of this because i have my own sort of like long big project spinning plans is a spin along and so it's going to be in two parts this one it would be a spin along and then a knit along to go with it so it's kind of like a two-parter this along um, I guess it could be an, a crochet along as well. It doesn't have to be a knit along. Um, but so the idea would be we um, decide on a project that we want to spin for. So for me right now, the thing I want to spin for is a sweater. And I showed you the fibre for that um, in one of the last spinning vlogs that I did. And you'll have seen the fibre that I got to finish off that spin um, in the acquisition segment of this podcast. So I've got about four bumps, braids or bags of fibre that I need to spin up to go with the one uh, set of bro legs that I've already spun up to make a sweater quantity to knit myself a sweater. So I was wondering if anyone wanted to take part in that. You don't have to spin for a sweater, that is not a requirement. You can spin for a shawl, gloves, if you're a drop spindler, you can spin for a smaller project, like you can spin for whatever project you want really, like there's no yardage requirement to achieve this is just meant to be fun this is not meant to be super serious like pick something that's a little bit of a challenge for you and only you can determine what that is like if you're brand new to spinning your your goal might be just to spin enough yarn to knit a hat or whatever it is like honestly you don't have to have huge goals um and i was thinking we could run that the actual spin along part for maybe three months and then um have a corresponding knit along for another three months um, so like a six month overall overall knit along, spin along, knit along. So the spin along, and then the knit along section could really be a make along section actually. We'll call it a make along because then you could do crochet or weaving or anything else. And uh, so then the idea would be that you would use the fibre that you spun and turn into yarn to then knit the pro knit or crochet or weave the project that you were, that you'd picked it out for originally. Now, if you're not a spinner, but you still want to take part, you can. The only caveat would be that you have to use hand spun for the make along portion of the of this um, overall cow, spin along cow. I don't know what to call it. Um, so yeah, that was my thoughts. Again, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, love to know your thoughts on that. I've never hosted a spin along before, so curious to hear from others who may have taken part in spin alongs or hosted them to um, hear your thoughts on that. Um, and yeah, so I think there's, I, again, I have ideas for that and I'm thinking of starting that in April um, just because it'll be after Edinburgh and um, yeah, I won't have time to start it before then. So um, yeah, so what do you, and it gives people time if they want to do it to go ahead and like purchase fibers and stuff. And I'm, I'm happy to have the, the actual, um, uh, like time periods to be extended or you know to make them longer so maybe, maybe you guys don't think three months is enough for the spin long portion maybe you guys think that it should be five months I'm fine with that I don't mind um, let me know your thoughts moving on to I have redrawn some prize winners so actually I need to go grab the prizes so I can show you so first up from the last podcast I did I announced I was going to do a Mon Sheep shop um, giveaway for the for these yarns which I used to knit the little red pullover so as well as giving away the yarns I'm going to give away both copies of the little well a copy of the little red and the big red to uh, the winner so there's enough yarn here to knit the little red pullover up to the two to four year size which is the size I knit for my daughter um, using this color as the main color and this is your contrast so um, the winner for this one was um uh, sorry i forgot to write write down like comment numbers and stuff for this but it was ronna casement ronna casement the name should be popping up on the screen here for you and um i will contact you on ravelry by when i send you the patterns but if you can send me your email address your email address your 
postal address I can get this out to you in the mail as soon as I can that goes that's the same for everybody else if you can let me know um, your postal address I can get these out to you as soon as possible then I had I actually ended up choosing two winners for the just because giveaway that I hosted back in January and I uh, the second winner never actually got in touch with me so um, I it's been over a month since I announced those winners so I have redrawn and the new winner for the Blue Sky Fibers um, yarn bundle that I decided to give away what is Ruth Proctor Ruth Proctor names popping up on the screen I went back to that video and drew from those comments so um, so yeah if you can get in touch with me with your address I can send these out to you as soon as possible and then I had from the Cozy Sock Club the December drawing uh, one of the winners didn't get in touch. So all of these are redraws from people who didn't get in touch with me the first time. So I redraw and the new winner is at entry number 378, J Row Knits. Get up on the screen and you win this skein of Colour Craze Fibre. Um, I showed one of the socks that I'd knit was out of her yarn, not this colourway but a different one. And this is on her MCN base, so it's a merino cashmere nylon blend. And it doesn't have a colourway name on it, but it's, oh, it's just popped out the bag. There we go, now you can see it better. Uh, really, really beautiful, fun, bright pops of colour. I'll put that back in the bag before I send it out. And then we have, I'm just going to grab what I can see. We have these yarns. These are by Knit Crate. It's their Uru yarn on the Sugar Worsted base, which is AC Wash Merino, Nylon and Stellina blend in a worsted weight. So you've got two skeins here, 219 yards each and 100 grams. And... The winner for this one is, it came from the Cozy Sock Club from the overall prize draw that I did with everyone who entered. It was entry number 303, Min Min Lia. Min Min Lia, I think that's how you pronounce it. And you can see it's a super sparkly yarn. So really, really fun. And then next up we have, a bit of dust in here. Um, these two skeins of um, Vida Lana by Knit Crate. This is the Heather Chunky in the Black Cherry colorway. It's 100% wool, chunky weight, 60 yards per 100 meters. So you get two of those. And the win winner for this one was from the Wanderlust Suck Club from the overall prize draw. And that was entry number 355, CQ Handmade. And the final winner to announce is also from the Wanderlust Suck Club, the overall prize draw. And this is for Audine Wool's on their um, Halo DK, which is a alpaca merino wool, um, merino wool nylon blend. 236 yards in 100 grams, and you get two of those. And this is the olive colorway. And the winner for this was entry number 506, and it's Kida 1984. So if all of you can please get in touch with me as soon as possible, I would love to get these prizes sent off to new homes. And if I don't hear from anyone this time after a month, these prizes are just gonna go back into the prize Pool for uh, future prize um, drawings and stuff because um, yeah all right and I don't know why I turned the page over back to the front I need this still <laughs> we are now going to move on to weeks in review where I just briefly tell you guys what we've been up to so uh, last time I spoke to you guys we had just sent Leila off to my parents house for the weekend for her birthday and she had a great time she had an absolute blast she loved it and we had a really nice relaxing weekend where we didn't really do much so that was great too <laughs> and then um the weekend after that we visited perry's parents on the saturday and then on the sunday i went to the knitting and stitching show with my mum and i actually vlogged that weekend so there's a vlog for that up on the channel and and then last weekend i had a on the saturday i went and met up with my friends at one of my friends house and um we had a duvet day which is essentially where we just hang out for the day eat watch movies and chat which is was which I needed last time I'd seen them was about three months ago so that was far too long um and then and then on the Sunday I uh we went my parents we were celebrating my brother's my brother's birthday he's turned 29 this year and um and yeah that's really been it like to be honest our weeks have been very much very similar like Mondays and Fridays I try and entertain Layla, Layla as best as I can without getting in Perry's way. Like we go out, we do our things. The weather has been a bit hit and miss. So on the days that the weather's been nice, we've been spending as much time as we can at the park, going out. We've been enjoying weekly coffee dates together, me and Layla. I get a coffee, she gets cake. 
and um, that's been going down really well and it's been really nice the other day she fell asleep in the coffee shop that was a bit random but um, worked out okay and then um, and then yeah oh and the other thing that we've got planned is I ne haven't again announced this yet on the podcast is that Perry and I have planned our first sort of like little European road trip for the three of us um, so that's really exciting at the end of April um, we're going to be going away for a couple of weeks and yeah we're doing a driving holiday we had thought about flying somewhere and stuff but Perry actually really enjoys road trips and I quite enjoy road trips because road trips mean knitting time and um, yeah it was fine by me and we've never really taken Layla on like a like a bigger road trip like this before so we thought it'd be a good little like taster like dip our feet in the water to see if this is something that she could be amenable to in the future she's pretty good in the car these days to be honest we can do the whole run from our house to my parents without having to stop and that's usually about an hour and a half to two hours sometimes we do stop it just depends on the time of day like we usually end up stopping because we have to feed her <laughs> or we'll change her nappy or something so uh, it just depends on the time of the day if we go first thing in the morning we can just do it in like a shot um so we've planned this trip with the idea that none of the driving distances between each of the places we're staying is um, no more than three and a half hours between each place. So that did limit us in terms of how far we could go. And also I didn't want to be spending like one night in one place and then moving to somewhere else for one night and somewhere else and just like just like hopping around one night one night here and there because we constantly just be checking in and checking out and we're staying in the Airbnbs and usually you have to check out by a certain time and then you can't check into the next place until later in the afternoon so you have this like gap where you can't we don't have anywhere to put your stuff anyway so we, i wanted to make sure that we had a decent amount of time in each of the places we were staying at and um and a couple of places where we're staying a little bit longer we can do like little day trips from that from that city or place as being like our base to travel from so um we settled on five places that we're going to so we're staying in bruges in belgium then we're going to amsterdam in the netherlands then we're going to cologne in germany then we're going to luxembourg city in luxembourg and um and then finally we're going to stop at montreux sur mer in france um it's quite close to calais but um actually perry's parents have a property there so we're going to be staying there which is why we're going to <laughs> there it's a little tiny village it's really lovely um as actually where victor hugo wrote lame is so a little bit of trivia there for you and at least i think that's true <laughs> they they have an every year in the summer they do a um outdoor performance of lame is um in montreux and um and yeah we're going to be taking the euro tunnel so we're taking our car on the euro tunnel to france um and uh and yeah so we're really excited we've booked all our accommodation we've booked the euro tunnel i finally did that yesterday and um and yeah so we're really excited the only question i have for you guys is do you have any recommendations anywhere that we must go to any yarn shops i must try and plant obviously i know of stephen and penelope in amsterdam but that's really the only yarn shop in any of these places that we're going to that i'm aware of if you have any recommendations for places to eat um, especially kid-friendly ones, uh, things to do, specifically kid-friendly things to do. Uh, I've really looked, there's like a chocolate factory we can go to in Bruges, there's, um, I really want to go see the, I've always wanted to go see the tulip fields in Amsterdam, like in the Netherlands, so that's definitely something we're going to do because it turns out we're there like in the midst of like tulip season, so I've always wanted to go see the tulip fields and um, what else are we going to do? There's apparently the zoo in Cologne is meant to be really good. So weather permitting, I think we might try and do that. Um, otherwise, yeah, like I've not done a whole ton of research. I've like briefly looked to see that there's things to do in each of the places that we're going that would be suitable for Layla. And pretty much all of these places have good museums as well. So if the weather's really rubbish, we can do some indoor things. So, um, and we're staying in Airbnbs. So um, it's self-catered, like we can sort ourselves out. Um, so yeah, so really interested to hear your thoughts on that, on any recommendations you guys have. Feel free to let me know, you can send me a message, you can email me. My email is knittingexpat at gmail.com, pretty simple. Um, you can send me a message on Ravelry, 
and yeah i think that's it to be honest i feel like this podcast is going to be plenty long enough without me rambling on anymore so thank you so much for joining me today i hope you have a lovely week and i will see you guys again soon all right take care bye